I am extremely honored to welcome uh, you here this morning to the launch of the Chola Plan, uh, which is a financial literacy campaign, as you've, as you've heard. On behalf of KBA, I'd like to extend our appreciation to our chief guest, Dr. Kamadhuge, for joining us this morning. Uh, your presence here underscores CBK's commitment to support initiatives that promote sustainability and socioeconomic growth in this country. At the outset, uh, Governor, I wanted to clarify that the name of the plan, Chora Plan, has nothing to do with my last name. <laughs> but I do look forward to being associated with its success, and I hope the name will be sticky, Raymond. <laughs> so hopefully I've answered your question. As such, I do want to really extend my very warm gratitude to our esteemed partners, a number of them mentioned on the board, who have dedicated time and resources in support of this campaign, exemplifying the importance of collaboration, as Eva talked about, in bridging the existing gaps in the financial realm and the people that we serve. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chora Plan campaign is premised on the prevailing low levels of savings and the high financial illiteracy amongst Kenyans. Studies have shown that there is a direct correlation between financial literacy and levels of savings. To contextualize the need to cultivate a saving culture in Kenya, a 2021 Global Financial Literacy Survey indicates that only 38% of Kenyans are financially literate, compared to 40% in Tanzania and 42% in South Africa. Our saving rates lag at 13%, which is far below the Africa average of about 17%. Faced with this reality, action must be taken. It is through initiatives such as the Chora Plan that we can reverse the deeming financial health among the population for our prosperity as individuals, entrepreneurs, and as a nation. This campaign is thus intended to bring to light responsible spending and saving habits, responsible borrowing, and more importantly, enlighten Kenyans of the, of the several options available to save, invest, pay, and grow. If one were to look at the number of products offered by the partners here today, there is no doubt that the savings product portfolio in Kenya, for example, is diversified enough to cater for all Kenyans in both formal and informal sectors. And as we have heard from a number of them, and we shall hear from more, the products and services are easily accessible. The help for responsible borrowing, spending, payments, tracking, budgeting, and all that. And I must say, I must recommend our own regulator, the Central Bank of Kenya, who have done a marvelous job of making it simple for all of us now to invest in government bonds and bills as well. Can we give them a clap for the work they have done? But the problem and the reason we're here today and the reason we are launching this campaign is the most, the two very important questions. One is, how many Kenyans are aware of all this that is represented in this room? And even for those who have an idea, where do they start? And the second part, do we know what Kenyans want? Are we innovating the right product? Or do we have products that we've innovated, whether you be banks, circles, payment schemes, or anyone else in the room, are we coming up with products that only serve a very small segment of Kenyans? Those are, for me, the two fundamental questions to ask yourself. So let me start with the first one. Recently, I was returning from a trip, and I landed fairly late at night. I took a taxi from the airport, and I was being driven by a young man. I believe his name was Kyoko. I was quite tired, so I got on my, um, my phone, got on X or Twitter to catch up on the latest social media. I wanted to see what governor has been up to. If you want to know what he's been up to, that's where, that's where you check. So I was on social media, and I really didn't want to have a conversation. So we got off the airport, came through the expressway, and all was quiet, really quiet. 
kind of dozing. But I noticed Kyoko kept looking through the rear view mirror to see if I'm, I'm asleep. Just as we got off the expressway, he looked at me, looked back, and he said, sir, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. And a bit disturbed, yeah? Then he says, um, tell me, between bonds and stocks, where should one invest for quick returns? I was a bit like, OK. That's an odd question to be asked at 11 PM at night <laughs> when you're a bit falling asleep. So I told him, well, first of all, uh, young man, there's nothing like quick returns. There's nothing like quick returns. They're just high, low, or no returns. So I hope you ask me where you can get better returns or low returns. So I told him very quickly, you know, if you have money to invest, uh, stocks is really for long term. If your money you can put away, forget about it for many years, you should put it there. But for you, I think you should do some stocks. But if you need money quickly for school fees or something like that, then bonds at least they assure you what you're going to get. I was trying to kind of make the conversation very short, so I didn't tell him about all the other options. So I went back to my device. I started driving for a while, another five minutes or so. Then he turned around and said, Sir, what about money markets? Said, OK. This man wants to have a conversation. I said, well, money markets. So I now start explaining to him what money markets are. And then I went a bit further than talking you know, uh, fixed deposits and all these other options that we're all familiar with. Then I said, you know, by the way, you can start with 10,000 shillings. I think you should really start. Just find 10,000 shillings, Kyoko, and get started. And I, then he asked me, uh, but how do I access it, money markets? So I asked him, which bank are you with? He told me his bank. I will not name it. It is not mine. <laughs> um, I said, well, can you go ask them and see how they can help you? And he said, well, I asked my, at the branch, and they sent me to some building in town. I don't even know where it is. I said, OK, that's a problem. We need to make sure, and I said, I'll actually talk to that bank, make sure that the person you're talking to should be able to help you, at least give you some information, basically access to information. And I said, and by the way, even before they do, at least fixed deposits, you can do. Start 10,000 shillings. Just tell them that's all you have, 10,000 shillings to deposit, to do a fixed deposit. I went back to my device. And we drove all the way to my house. And when I was getting out of the house, I, um, you, know, you have to sign some forms for them to get paid. So I'm signing the receipt. I said to him, so Kyoko, have you thought about that conversation? Because now I'm wide awake, eh? I'm getting out of the car. That, I said, yeah, yeah, that was useful. I said, so have you thought about, I asked him, so how much do you think you start with? I mean, I'm thinking the guy would tell me what? 10,000, because I've mentioned 10,000 like five times. He tells me, you know, I've been saving to buy my own Uber. I have about a million shillings. <laughs> was like, what? So I stood up. I said, hey, uh, let me tell you about another bank. <laughs> but the point is, the Chora plan is about people like those. We have so many who don't know about the things that we have to offer, isn't it? And then we come up with these products. I look at, and if you look at banks like mine, and I'm sure you as well, you have about 32 don't you? I'm pretty sure about that. I don't know if you know that. Most banks have between 15 to 40 saving products and accounts. I think we all say we have a, one account eh, at a bank, but actually, if you ask the bank how many accounts, types of accounts you have, they are very many, because we keep creating these products. You find somebody, they want this, this idea you created. So we must also come to the second question. One, we must make our people know about our products and our offerings and what we have. The second one is about creating products that are relevant and are usable. Usable is important, which brings me to the second story. A young man left the village and went to the city. And he was quite successful in the city. He attended university. Dan got a very good job. Dan, he got a nice car. Dan. And after being very successful, he decided it's time to go back to the village and show off 
this new car or moti as we as we call it to go back to the village and show off his new car as he's driving to the village he got into this very narrow road the narrow road there was a chicken in front of him yeah chicken and he looked at this chicken and he started hooting for it to get off the road, but the chicken started running along the road. And he kept hooting, and the chicken just kept running. I decided now I'm going to speed up so the chicken can get off the, off the road, because surely it must be leaving its home. So he kept driving faster and faster, and the chicken kept running faster and faster. After a while, he noticed the chicken could have run the car at any speed. So he was very intrigued, so he kept chasing it. And he noticed it had three legs. How many legs? Three legs. So he said, wow, now I'm curious. I want to follow it. So he actually slowed down and now followed it and followed the chicken. Eventually, the chicken entered into a homestead. And he turned to the homestead to find out about this three-legged chicken. And we got him. He met the farmer at the gate. And he said, wow, I was chasing a chicken. And they entered into this homestead. Did you see it? He said, yes. Wow, did you notice there's a three-legged chicken? Then the farmer said, yes, those are my chickens. He said, oh, wow, you have a three-legged chicken. He said, yes, let me tell you a story. What happened was um, I grew, I reared chicken. And every once in a while, we slaughter a chicken to eat. And when we do, I noticed my wife, Anastasia, really loves uh, chicken thighs. And I also love chicken thighs. And then we had a daughter, Esther, who also developed a craving for chicken thighs. So every time we would slaughter a chicken, we would fight over who is going to have the drumsticks. So I decided, being the innovative fellow that I am, like banks are, I'm going to come with that product to serve everybody. So I innovated three-legged chicken to make sure we have three legs. He said, oh, that man said, oh my goodness. So does it taste the same as a two-legged chicken? And the man said, you know, young man, I wish I could tell you, but I've been chasing them. I've never been able to catch one. <laughs> so let's come up with products that we can all use.